can't get enough anyway. You know what I mean? But we got the homegirl Destiny on the line. Destiny, you with me? Hey, Destiny, you with me? I'm uh, Ottawa. How are you doing? There you go. Yeah, man, man. <laughs> What's poppin'? BKCU. How are you? We cool. We doing all right. You know, what about you? I'm here. I'm last. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> That's good. All right. <laughs> I hope the time wasn't inconvenient for you. You know what I mean? Nah, nah. Well, I was up um, doing, doing what we got to do to, you know, bring the hot records and stuff to you guys. So I'm, I'm here. I'm up. I'm live. There you go. All right. So uh, we won't waste any of your time. We get straight to the interview. So why don't you just tell the listeners who you are and a brief history lesson on yourself. Okay, for those of you guys who don't know, my name is Destiny. Um, I am the newest upcoming artist out of um, the Toronto area. Um, I'm, I am with One Umbrella um, Corporation, um, bringing my style from um, Umbrella Coded. To all of you guys out there So yeah I sing I rap um, I'm an entertainer That's me Multi-talented Multi-talented That's sure. what's up And you said Umbrella Coded right? Umbrella Coded That's, that's the name of my My label right now There you go There you go So anybody tuned in right now Thinking that Toronto is just Drake Beat it You know <laughs> <laughs> Goddamn. All right. Um, you know, I was reading up on your uh, little biography or whatever, and they were saying that uh, the way you came up in the music industry is a lot different than a lot of people that I've uh, interviewed before. So pretty much the question is, like, your journey to the music industry isn't like everybody else. So why don't you tell the listeners about your little come up? Well, um i always been making music from time and we just start that there. Um, of course, in my family, um, we we all do music. Um, my youngest brother, however, did break the mold and, you know, um, make it first out of all of us. So, Tory Lanez, shout out to Tory Lanez, my Much love. big brother. Right. Um, yeah, he did his thing, breaking the mold with the one umbrella for, um, label, our family label, and, you know, just um, putting us up on the map. And um, me, I kind of just took my own art and just, you know, waited for my time or whatever being. And um, at the right timing, like, you know what I'm saying, just started to push this out and um, really showcase my music and my style and stuff like that. So, um, it's kind of crazy because, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a, um, with a well, musical family, you have to wait your timing and everything and, you know what I'm saying? And, For sure. But that, that's pretty much how it came to be, you know? I have my youngest brother out there, Tori, doing his records already, dropping that. And um, pretty much I just decided to wait till my timing so I could drop it right for you guys to hear it and everything like that. So, you know, that's how it pretty much went about with the whole um, coming up out there thing. But, yeah, um, musically, I've just been making music, like, throughout my whole life. So it's not been something that's just, like, um, thought of at the last second, you know? That's what's up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, now I was reading and they were saying that uh, your father was a preacher? Yeah, he still is. Yeah. He still is. He's a missionary. Um, Sun Star Peterson. So um, he's, he's a pastor, he, but he started off as an entertainer. Um, when he was much younger, he was doing a lot of performances um, with his group Soul Express for like the Prime Minister. And like all over um, different countries and stuff like that. So yeah, they was they was getting it in from younger. That's dope. Yeah, on the entertainment side. So I mean, I, it, I've always been grown into it. Mm hmm. Now it's crazy, you know. Like um, 
I didn't know he was an entertainer like that. You know, what kind of music he was making? Um, they were more, they were into like that soul, jazz, you know, that back in the day. You was playing computer love. They're like into that, that style right there. For sure. Yeah, now we love our oldie but hoodies around here. That's what we call them, you know? <laughs> yeah, they were, they, they were the ones popping back then. So, I mean, um, started from then. And then he, my dad, my mom, they had a six and... You know, all of this is like musically inclined, so. That's dope. That's crazy. Now, uh, because because of his, uh, you know, being a minister and all, he was keeping you away from like music he considered destructive? Yeah, well, you know, when it comes to like um, Christian household, there's like. It's what you call it, secular music or worldly music, which would be um, any music other than 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 um, music spreading the message of, of God. You know? Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> so um, I wasn't really able to tap into those type of music like that, you know, unless like I was out there and just heard like some some verse on the radio or something like that, you know. What up? Yeah. So. Um, but he never really, um, he never really stopped us from listening to like music with like the message of love, like Earth, Wind, and Fire, and like classic, you know, Jackson and stuff like that. Classic. Like, those those songs I was never banned from listening to. So right, man, yeah, that's where my main message in my music is all started. For sure. I mean, that's not a bad uh, genre of music to listen to anyway. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> Again, classics, you know, because of what they've done, because of Earth, Wind, and Fire, because of the Jacksons, and because of the kind of music that they were pushing, like, you can see the influence in the hip-hop game today. Oh, for sure. You know what I mean? So it's not even like, it's not even like they're not even connected, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's definitely. You can always tell, you can always tell, um, especially with some of the newer artists. You can tell where it like originates from, you know. Um, even with me myself, when I listen to certain old school artists um, from like back in the days, like when it comes to like R and B and stuff like that, um, Mariah's and and Tony and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, these are like the basis of my music. You feel me? <laughs> For sure, most definitely. You know, it's crazy because, like, there's a lot of artists, again, new new age artists, artists that are doing their music today that aren't really musically inclined like that, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, the saying goes, it's like, yo, when you look at every genre of music, they always pay tribute and pay homage and respect to the older cats. It's great, yeah. Yeah, but then when it comes to hip-hop, you know, it's always like, oh, them old heads don't know, and that's old music, and that's a, old, you know, old man beat, yeah. and shit like yeah. that, you know? Yeah, I always I always I always could tell the essence when you can hear somebody that has listened to artists like that in the past. So for sure, you can always feel the difference between in their music. You know what I'm saying? Most definitely. You know, and as far as I'm concerned, to me, that is that like that's the secret ingredient in making a track that's gonna last the test of time, kind of thing. You know what I mean? Right, Whereas right, making like right. you know these these popcorn tracks where they here today gone tomorrow kind of thing you know what I mean like nah <laughs> it's crazy. Get that. But I right, check it. Um, like you were saying you know you would hear music outside you know the the destructive secular music or whatever right mm -hmm. you hear it on the outside. So my question to you because like when I read your bio I'm like yo I got interested I'm like yo what was the first track or first album or whatever that you heard that was secular and why was it N.W.A.? Um, why was it N.W.A.? It's N.W.A., am I right? My, the first track that I can remember hearing that had to be on that secular vibe where I could say, like, yeah, I probably did memorize, like, every track would have to be probably a one of the Bone Thugs tracks. What? <laughs> I can't even lie. 
Yo! I cannot even lie. <laughs> and it was like, um, um, you remember Crossroads? Hell yeah! Obviously, Crossroads is mad at me. Most definitely. Um, and I, I remember they would always be, um, in, in, in between the, they would always have like their little riffs or whatever. And I remember seeing that. And my dad was like, what are you saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was like, how do you even know that song? It was just like something in the melody mm-hmm. or in certain sounds that I would always take with me. And then you just hear me humming it. It's not that I, I fully, um, like, listen to the song every day. Yeah. It's the certain melodies in the song that have me. So well, for sure. <laughs> that 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 was some of the the incidents that would happen with that. Like you know, mm. they're banging song on the radio and singing ahead all day. Like, Almost definitely. All day. <laughs> I mean that track when it came out at the time, like it even beat Beatle numbers. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. As soon as you hear it come out. Right. Yes, it's hard. <laughs> Some crazy shit. You know, I'm gonna miss everybody. You know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Goddamn. I don't know if you know this about me. I don't know, but um, I'm a big, big, big bone fan. You know what I mean? I'm a big bonehead. Really? And <laughs> you saying this now, you became my favorite artist too. Ah, no. I appreciate that. No, no, no. It's real stuff. Like these are there's certain groups and certain artists out there that are just timeless. Like mm-hmm. I can listen to them right now and just be like, okay, this is now. This is this is right now. So like the yeah, Bone Thugs, definitely one of them. Tupac, definitely one of them. For sure. Um, I always say Nas, definitely one of them. Okay. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When it comes to the I mean, East Coast, yeah, definitely Nas is up there, you know? Couple of you, yeah, you yeah. know? Mm. Crazy shit, all right. Now, uh, how old were you when you heard that Bone Thug track? I'm uh, not too exact of my age, but I know I had to be around... Uh, I had to probably just hit double digits. I remember watching the video and... I remember watching the video one time and being scared of the dude with the white eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was coming for me. <laughs> God damn. Some crazy shit. But, uh, yeah, I had to be probably just, like, just about nine or ten or something. And I heard that, you know? Right. So, um, and that was when I was just, like, really getting, like, into the whole, like the rap flows and stuff like that because I used to listen to like a lot of like R&B that was my, yeah. my stuff you know even with the gospel music my dad had me on a lot of go- gospel R&B groups like Out of Eden and stuff like that at Trinity 5-7 so that's dope um yeah that was that was what I was into but then when I heard that Bone Thugs mm-hmm. and how they were mixing the rap style with the singing yeah that right there bam that's, that's, that's most of my style. I love, I love to mix that in with um with what I do. I like to rap and sing and then just bust the straight rap and then bust some straight singing flows, you know? For sure. For sure. No, it's crazy when um they take the influence because they from Cleveland, right? And at the yeah. time when it came to like the funk and like the, the uh, soul era of music, a lot of the acts were from Cleveland, if not mm-hmm. Detroit. Right, and so they had the whole sing song style, you know what I mean? And I guess that influence yeah. bled into theirs, you know? Yeah, I, they really put that on the map for Cleveland at that point. Mm. I heard. Um, and then just recently, I heard, I heard his son came out with a track, um, Busy. Yeah, yeah. You get there that track? Nah. I don't know. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie to you, man. When it comes to this new. Genre of music, you know, this new think, age. Though. Nah, I'm not. I don't put my ear to the ground like that. You know. He sounds like his father, though. So. I mean. Yeah, it was a dope track. <laughs> I'll, you know, I'll give it a listen. I'll see what's what. You listen to him, man. Mm-hmm. He, you love the bone thugs, I mean, his son was sounding just like him on the track. Yeah, but it's he like it's, it's like buying soda. You know what I mean? I like Coke. But I don't like Diet Coke. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> So if I want both those, I'm not gonna get diet bone. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. 
Okay. But like, okay, going back to, you know, influences and stuff like that. You grew up in Toronto. Did you grow up anywhere else? I grew up in like tons of places. I've um, seen that. As I said before, my dad, my dad was a missionary or still is a missionary pastor. So, um, I lived in I lived in Barbados for about two three years of my life. Right. Um, when I was about seven. Um. Uh, earlier than that, it was Toronto. Mm-hmm. And from there. We had this like long journey. <laughs> okay. And it was like we stayed in New York for a period of time, Michigan, Detroit, um, and then it was straight to Florida. I remember it's, it's, I, we stayed in Florida for probably a good. I, I stayed there for I, for a good fifteen years. That's good. Came right back here. So. Yeah. How- how did all those spots influence your brand of music, your style? Um, it's crazy because sometimes I'll be flowing certain things and, and um, people will be like, you sound like you're from here. <laughs> yeah. um, I know in that aspect, um, it, people do comment on um, when it comes to my music. Um, as for how it's influenced me, man, there's different swags in like different areas, I guess. And I guess there's so much things to learn from each area. You know, um, for sure. being in the islands was, for example, totally different from being in Florida. Right. Um, the people are different. The, the the way of life is different. Um, all these things gave me something to talk about, especially um, they gave me an outlet because um, moving around constantly yeah. was became a very became an issue for me. <laughs> you know, because I couldn't I couldn't really attach myself to friends anymore. So it was always you know the pen to the pad. You know, yeah, I hear you. That. But um, just seeing how different people live and. Um, different ways of life and um, my emotions towards being there that's, that's, that's mainly it. how it pretty much started with the um, the songwriting like you know I would sure. just be somewhere and write my feelings and write about the ways of the people on the streets like so <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. that's influenced me a hell of a lot um, being in a lot of different places so you got an advantage over everybody else, you know? Yeah, it's an advantage. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of it. It felt very uneasy as a child. For sure, no, definitely. When 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 you <laughs> think now, about it like that, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, but now I actually feel like it was a it was a beautiful blessing. Um, there's not that many people that I, that you know get the chance to experience that in life. So most definitely. Most yeah, definitely. Yeah, it, you know? it was a great experience. For Most sure. Definitely. I can't lie about that. For me, I'm a firm believer of everything happening for a reason. And I feel, you know, after hearing your story like that, I feel that you had to go through all that in order for you to have your own style kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And now it's, it's like, funny. if, if um, your record is spinning on the radio, instantly people would know that's destiny. Whereas if it was somebody else, especially being in Toronto... Yeah. You know, that market is oversaturated in terms of hip hop yeah. artists, you know? So you need to stand yeah. out somehow. Right, right. Yeah. That's, 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 that's actually, um, that's, that's pretty dope that you pointed that out. I never thought about it that way. All right. <laughs> it's the home invasion, baby. That's how we roll, you know? Great job, enjoy. Right. Now, you were saying that, you know, yeah, to uh, like a talented family you come from. Yeah. Do you ever feel that like sometimes there's some competition going on? Um, within the family? Yeah. Nah, I find like it's more of like outside presence that would be like, you know, <laughs> I'd be like, yo, why is this here? Why isn't that done? Or, you know what I'm saying? So, um, within my family, nah, we're all love. I mean, we, we all, we all, um, motivate each other hell of a lot we're all calling each other you know 
and checking up on each other's projects a lot. So that's a blessing. Um, yeah, within the family, it's yeah. never, never that type of you know malice or jealousy going on. No, that's dope. That's good to hear. You know, especially in this business, the music industry. It's cutthroat, right? Oh my God! You know. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of horror stories out there, man. Like, there's a reason why there's so many, like, duos or even rap groups that aren't really together anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Some crazy shit. Yeah, that, that's a big problem. Um, as when it comes to splitting money and stuff like that amongst groups, I've heard mad groups go back for, for, for certain things like that. Yeah. You know, jealousy and things like that. Almost definitely. Yeah, personally, um, I, I, my pers- personally, I try not to um, get myself into that sort of thinking where I would be jealous of another. I always try to use everything as motivation. So for sure, you know, man, that's what's up. That that's what's up. All right, now you coming down to Ottawa soon? Yes, I will be there in about two weeks or now. Or not two weeks. Um, not this week. Sunday, Saturday. Next week, Saturday the seventeenth. There you go. I will be there, Bourbon Room. Um, we're gonna have um, like one of the litest shows set up for you guys out there. So I really want everybody, you know, to come and be a part of that and. Check out the history in the making, cause yo, it's gonna be fire. It's gonna be fire. Hey, y'all heard it right there. You know, I'm not gonna lie to you, man. I'm gonna try my best, best, best to show up. You know, but it's kind of hard when you got a little five year old. <laughs> you know, so. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, I'm yeah. Pushing myself. Um, man, try to come out. Um, there's gonna be a lot of talent there. Um, a lot of Ottawa artists are gonna be there. Mm-hmm. Um, as well, a lot of people from from your hometown over there. So, you know, for those listening on um, live right now, check it out. Check out check out your t- your local talent. Um, there'll be a lot of artists from Toronto coming through. That's what's um, up. I'll have one of my umbrella coded artists is opening up for me. So, come on out. There it's gonna go. be mad lit. It's gonna be mad lit. The Bourbon Room. There you go. Uh, November 17th. Be there, be there, be there. What time is the doors opening at? Um, I'm believing that the doors open around 8 o'clock. Um, last time, show started around 10 o'clock. So okay. I'm, I'm believing it's starting around the same same time. But for all of that other information, you guys could definitely go online and hit up... Um, Freddie Fame on social media mm-hmm. who um, has all the information for basically the event for the show so we'll um, definitely shout that, it out you can also hit up my my um, social media information's on there check it out that's what's up now we'll definitely keep the listeners uh, you know we'll let them know updated with the info and all that you know what I mean yeah yeah all right, then. I got you guys too, so I'm gonna keep you guys posted and updated. That's all love. Time. <laughs> That's all love. All right. <laughs> all right. If uh, y'all just tuned in, that was the talented, multi-talented sister SWV. I'm talking about Destiny holding it down for Toronto. She on her way down to Ottawa. Uh, November 17th That's a Saturday Bourbon Room Hosted by the man Freddie Fame You know Putting it all together And I want to say much love Go out to Freddie Fame And everybody at Re- um, Umbrella Coded Record label You know what I mean Thank and, uh, you Thank yeah. you And of course I appreciate you For having me tonight Man anytime Anytime Right in the morning Anytime I heard some of your joints Right here We're definitely going to Add it to the rotation So You know It's not going to be A oh, one and done sure. Thank you. That sounds great. My bad for that. No, it's sounds all good. Sounds great. See, no see you. It's, it was wonderful. Um, you guys put me, you know, put me on there. You guys are the first radio station that I've been on in, in, in Ottawa. So mad love for that. There you go. We all about exclusives anyway. So <laughs> we click. Perfect. No run.
Have a good night. Thank you. You too as well. Mm-hmm. I'll be seeing you guys in Ottawa. Much love. Peace, Queen. Perfect. Thank you. Good night. Once again, that was Destiny from Toronto. And I want to say much love. Go out to the homegirl, you know, calling in at this time and shit, you know. It's a grind, man. When you're an artist, it's a grind. You got to hustle for your spot, you know. But uh, without further ado, we got some joints right here just to let you know what to expect on November 17th. Once again, Saturday, November 17th, Bourbon Room. That's where y'all need to be. You know, uh, umbrella coated in the building all the way down from Toronto and support your local talent. You know what I mean? There's going to be a lot of Ottawa artists, too. You know, so without further ado, we're going to spin them joints back to back. No interruptions. None of that. And we will be back in just a little bit. Check it out, y'all.